my alarm clock was off. And good morning, folks. It is a Saturday morning, and I'm literally just waking up in bed right now. Today is kind of a random video. I'm just gonna do a random vlog, a day in the life of Adventure Ed on a Saturday. I got a lot of fun stuff planned that I've kind of barely planned. I'm gonna do some birding this morning, some herping tonight. I was at a bonfire on the beach till about midnight last night, stayed up way past my bedtime. It's uh, about 7 a.m. right now though. I'm gonna get my day going. And I like to weigh myself every single morning. Kind of random, but I'm weighing myself like I'm a bird at a field station. What? The scale is not working. What's going on here? Oh, uh, there we go, 181.8. Okay, pretty much what I would expect. I'll probably be 190 by the end of the day because I drink so much water because, you know, I'm all healthy like that. Yeah, I'll show you some of the posters in my room. I'm such a nerd. See that pair of poster? Got some of these uh, interesting pieces of artwork. This is my favorite poster right here. It's a poster that shows every single species of bird that normally breeds in North America. I slipped on my, my morning robe. Uh, I got this banana robe from Plover robes. They're just great to throw on when uh, you know you wear them around the house. And you know, I actually live uh, pretty much right on the beach in San Diego, so they're a good robe to wear to the beach or the pool. So I will put a link in the description of this video to their Instagram um, and to their website. They're awesome. And every morning uh, when I get ready, I always put on my Plover robe. All right, got my clothes on. So I love making this video because I feel like such a typical. YouTube lifestyle influencer, which I'm totally not. I have <laughs> a small YouTube channel, but I don't know, it's fun. It's fun to kind of do the stereotypical thing. But I'm gonna show you my burning garb, which is a very normal t-shirt and a very normal pair of shorts and normal running shoes. By the way, I definitely need to clean off my mirror. Wow. Got my sunblock on my face. Always gotta do that in San Diego. I always wear a hat when I'm outside to keep my head from getting sunburned too. When you go birding, I tend to think that it's better just to wear sort of like darker clothes. You know, whether it's this color or green or brown. You know, there's those rumors out there that if you wear white, that's not good. I haven't really looked too much into the research, but I don't know. <laughs> And yeah, we'll be coming back to my place later today to enjoy the beach. You know, of course, what would a lifestyle vlog in Southern California be without, you know, some clips at the beach, right? I think on the way to birding, I gotta stop and get a cup of coffee at least. Just like all the Leopold, you always gotta get your cup of coffee before you go out and uh, see wildlife. I got my coffee, and then I also got a snack, protein bar. When you go birding, when you go hiking, you always need enough calories uh, to keep you going. I am kind of addicted to sparkly water. You gotta own up to your addictions. So yeah, it's already getting kind of late. It's already 7.30, so we gotta get in the road. <laughs> So I have arrived at my birding destination. I'm at the Tijuana River Valley Regional Park, and this is a great place for migratory warblers, other migratory passerines. Early April, as you know, I'm in Southern California, and uh, migration is on its way. I'm pretty pumped. Yeah, dude, just having a nice little walk through the gardens here. There's lots of birds here, hearing lots of stuff. House wren, uh, tons of Allen's hummingbirds and his hummingbirds. Pacific slope flycatcher, which is a migratory species. This is also a great place for a common ground dove, which uh, is not that common in Southern California. Um, that's more of a neotropical species. And by the way, be sure to watch until the end of the video too, because I think I might've said this earlier, but tonight we're going herping in the Anza Borrego Desert, and we are gonna be looking for some snakes. So now I'm gonna drive around to the other side of this park, which is called the Dairy Mart Pond Trail, which is another good place to see migrants. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now I'm here at the Dairy Mart Pond Trail and you can actually see the Mexican border fence right over there. So I'm gonna walk down this trail, see if I can see any migrants on this trail, and then probably in another half an hour or so, um, I'm gonna head back to Mission Beach. I just saw a yellow warbler, which I've seen a million of in my life, so I don't really care that much. But I also saw a Nashville warbler, which, you know, I've seen plenty of those in my life too. I don't see those all the time. That was really cool. I figure I might as well point out this, which is an invasive species of plant around Southern California. This is called Arundo, and uh, it's a type of bamboo, I believe. And uh, this stuff has just taken over so much. I think some species of birds don't mind the Arundo, but uh, I think overall it's just really not good for native plants. There's actually more species of native plants in San Diego County than any other county in the continental United States. But unfortunately, a lot of the native species of plants are under threat from invasive species. People talk about climate change, they talk about pollution, they talk about over hunting, over harvesting. All of those are threats to biodiversity, but one of the biggest threats to biodiversity is invasive species. I just feel like it really doesn't get enough attention. Right in front of me calling though is a Bell's Vireo, and the subspecies is the least Bell's Vireo. So Bell's Vireos, you can still hear it calling over there. There's actually a couple now. The subspecies that we get here in Southern California is of conservation concern. And now I've been standing here for about 20 minutes watching multiple Lee Spells videos all around me. Um, they have this very distinctive song as you might be able to hear. And the sun has come out, which is pretty cool. Around San Diego, these guys really cause a lot of headaches for developers. It's pretty interesting. back in the direction of Mission Beach. And look at this. I was having a sip of my sparkly water and I just spilled sparkly water all over my pants. So now it looks like I peed on my pants while burning and I spilled a slight bit on the outside of my camera, which my camera's fine. All right, I had to stop at Starbucks because uh, I'm pretty hungry. All I had was a protein bar and I really love Starbucks breakfast sandwiches. I hate to give too much love to the monopolizing giant corporations, but... So I actually just remembered that uh, my friend who is starting a new dating app is doing a promotion event right now. He's doing a coconut water giveaway. Um, in Pacific Beach in San Diego, kind of right near where I live. So on the way home, I'm gonna stop there, say hi, uh, get some coconut water. It's called Dolphin, and it's a dating app for nature lovers, okay? So whether you like spending time outside at the beach or hiking, or if you're like a true nature nerd like me and you're into bird watching and herping and wildlife photography, Overall, it's just for people who like to spend time outside. If you are young and single and in love with nature, as you should be, um, this app is for you. So I will put a link uh, to the app in the YouTube description. You guys are officially on the Adventure Ed YouTube channel, all of you. Coconut waters we gave out. We sold out we all the nature lovers. There was no so way. Many, you literally, no joke, this whole place was packed. No way. 
<laughs> yeah, amazing. So this is Matt. This is my buddy Matt. This is my buddy Rachel. Hey. They're brother and sister. We're live streaming from At Downward Dorsal. And HQ. Uh, sorry, I was a little late to uh, the coconut water giveaway. It looks like there's no <laughs> coconut water left. But so yeah, I had lots of sparkly water, and as you can see, I actually spilled more on my crotch in the middle of the car. So on still, your dorsal. Yeah, you, actually in the sun, you can see. See, it still looks like I peed myself again. Right here, here's the logo, dolphin. And you're gonna want to find your nature lover. That's that's what we're all about. So yeah, I mean, and and basically, my sister and I, we're both on the app ourselves we're single we're looking for someone that's cool wants to get outdoors wants to go surfing do some yoga go on adventures and well you know what there wasn't an app for that so we created it dolphin dating rachel and i just cruising around town right now we're focused in southern california but we do have people from around the world that have signed up so hey anybody out there that's watching this you got to be on dolphin 100 percent. see you there <laughs> so yeah if you're Fingal, get on the app, and you can find it on the app store. Yep, right? Dolphin Dating. Dolphin Dating. F-I-N. Nature lovers rule! And now we're doing a little bit of uh, dolphin uh, media content filming, photo shooting. Got the uh, dolphin hat here. We got, they got pink hats, they got white hats. So, will they be able to order these hats off the website? Absolutely. All right. Dolphinately. Dolphinately. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You can enjoy this app from anywhere you are in the world. And, Absolutely. you know, the point of this app is to, of course, meet other like-minded people who love nature, but also part of the point is to get other people involved with enjoying nature as well, right? Absolutely, oh, yeah. it's a gateway. It's a gateway. Imagine, you know, you're someone who, you're curious a little bit about nature, and maybe you're, you know, on the app and you match with someone who's an extreme outdoors person and they say hey I want to take you on a crazy adventure and you say yes and then you go and next thing you know you're a big adventurer and it just passes on it's that ripple effect you know getting people to care more about the planet that's what we're all about spreading that love we're a planet-based dating app we got you around pelicans <laughs> Alright, so I'm home and I actually had to take care of a couple boring errands and now I'm just filming on my phone, but I'm going to cruise down the boardwalk and um, uh, go to the gym and I don't know if I will vlog at all at the gym. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of a wannabe fitness YouTuber, but I realized I fall a little short of that. So, you know, instead I'm a bird YouTuber, you know. So in my view, San Diego is the best place in the whole country to go bird watching. But another good place for people watching is the boardwalk of Mission Beach. There's just all kinds of characters going on the boardwalk there. So so I am done at the gym, and uh, yeah, sorry I didn't, uh, I didn't film it just because I don't know I feel weird filming myself at the gym. But uh, I'm gonna go on a little run here down the boardwalk, end up at my apartment, shower up, and then uh, head out to the desert. And I hope to get out to the desert um, around sunset. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just enjoying the beach for a little bit now. I got done with a long run. I am super lucky to live here. I'm not rich. I actually pay like a pretty average rent for uh, the beach neighborhoods in San Diego uh, for to live on the beach right here. I just kind of have a pretty sweet deal. It's kind of a fluke deal of an apartment right here. My apartment's not really that nice. But uh, yeah, and I actually don't have it for that much longer. But yeah, man. Um, trying to enjoy every little bit of it. We got a will it over here. You know, this is the reason most people love San Diego is the beach, you know, the vibes. You can go surfing. I was thinking about going surfing. I'm not very good at surfing, but the waves don't really look that good. But yeah, you know, most people are in San Diego because they love the beach. You got the mountains. You got the, uh, uh, you know, the fish tacos, the acai bowls, the 
the poke balls, however you pronounce them, poke. <laughs> but the reason why I love San Diego is because, you guessed it, the birds and the nature. There is arguably more habitat diversity here than anywhere else in the United States. You know, you got the ocean, you got all the coastal habitats, you got the coastal sage scrub, the chaparral, you go up in elevation to the mountains, you got the pine habitats, and then you go out into the desert. And that's just uh, a recipe for all this biodiversity. And yeah, man, there's actually, San Diego County is pretty much tied with LA County for the most species of birds in the country. So you know me, I'm a bird guy, so if there's more birds found here, then I'm gonna love this place. I am back in my apartment. I don't know if I showed you guys that painting. Whenever people see that, they always say something about the Tiger King. I don't miss that documentary. Anyway, I'm gonna shower, pick up some food, and then I'm gonna head out to the desert. Before uh, I go pick up my dinner, I'm gonna have a protein shake with just frozen blueberries and a scoop of protein powder. You know, just like a, a wannabe fitness influencer uh, will, you know, show you in a YouTube vlog. Except this is probably the most basic kind of smoothie you could ever make, but it's good. I added a little bit of stevia in there too. That's really the trick is adding stevia uh, to your smoothies if they're not that sweet because they're just type of protein powder. This is good if you're, if you're a vegan because it's like plant protein, but it doesn't really taste that good. But with stevia, it's good. I started talking about this pretty random, but you guys probably want to watch me go find some snakes. But, uh... In case you are wondering, it tastes really good. Just picked up my food, gonna eat it really quickly here in the car. I did not show any clips of my beautiful food that I picked up from that restaurant. It's like California Greek food. I got salad and skewers, some pita and hummus. It was really good. And now I'm kind of stuck in this traffic jam and I hope it doesn't make me too late going out to the Anza Borrego Desert because it was hot today. It was around 100 degrees out there today, but I don't want to get there too late because it will cool down pretty fast. So yeah, hopefully this traffic gets moving pretty quickly. Uh, this is the San Diego River right here. A uh, really good birding spot. That's University of San Diego right up there. That might have a special place in my heart pretty soon. Well, I'm here in Acotillo in the middle of the desert. So I'm just stopping at a gas station to load up on gas, make sure I have enough water, maybe grab a coffee just to make sure that, you know, I'm awake because it has been a long day and I didn't exactly get a full night's sleep last night. Right now it says it's 81 degrees. The temperature will be dropping quickly, so I probably have an hour, a couple hours to go, so I should probably stop talking so I can get out there before it's too cold. <laughs> All right, sweet, man. Got my snake hook, my snake tongs, got my boots on, and we got water, caffeine, gas, got everything. Uh, let's do some road cruising. Um, so what I'm doing right now, Herper's call road cruising, which is just driving around looking for reptiles in the middle of the road. All right, so we got our first snake here. Got a beautiful little Colorado sidewinder. These are little rattlesnakes. This guy actually up there, he's road cruising just like me. He just drove past us. He had stopped here, he had found this guy. I'm gonna go grab my snake hook and get him off the road before someone runs him over. So you will see why they get their name, Sidewander, as I move this guy off the road. All right, he really doesn't want to move. It's a lump on a log. Move. Get out the way. Get out the way. There we go, come on. There you go, check that out. Beautiful. Totally see why you get their name. Now you can hear the rattle. You hear that? One thing I just want to say too is last summer I was road cruising, found a sidewinder in the middle of the road. And you know, it's dark, pitch black everywhere. All you can see is where the car lights are. In like the five minutes that I had spent just photographing the sidewinder that we had found, another one had slithered up pretty much right to my foot without me noticing. 
and I would have stepped on it if I didn't shine the flashlight <laughs> right next to my foot where I was going to, you know, step to the side to go back into my car. So when you're road cruising, always check where you're stepping. Shine the flashlight everywhere where you're stepping because otherwise it, uh, you know, could mean bad news. The herper who had pulled over and found that sidewinder, he had pulled over and he had caught that gecko. So uh, yeah, you let me hold it, release it. So we're gonna keep going and he's actually ahead of me so I don't know, I have a feeling he's gonna see stuff before I do. So here's another Sidewinder. Taking an off-road here. I'm following uh, this guy who I met who I was talking about earlier. We. We stopped, we found a sidewinder in the middle of the road. There was something else that uh, skedaddled before uh, we could get a good look at it. Um, but hey, not a bad night. Two sidewinders so far. It is kind of early for herping in the Anza Borrego Desert. It's not too early, but it's on the earlier side. The best time of year is May. I'm just really happy that uh, I've found a couple snakes so far. We just cruised upon our third sidewinder. This guy's really small. This guy's probably like six inches long. Sidewander number three for the night. It's just awesome because, you know, I came out here, I thought I'd be driving by myself all night, but you know, I made a new friend. When you're out searching for wildlife, you never know who you're gonna meet. That's obviously why I wore this Buncey Palm shirt, you know, because had to impress. No, it's not like a chick or anything. He's a married man. All right, so we got a leaf nose snake here. You want, you want him? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So here is a leaf nose snake. And uh, I have found these guys road cruising out here before, the, if you're scared of snakes, this is probably a pretty good snake to uh, to get practice with holding. <laughs> yeah, it's so small and harmless, right? <laughs> Beautiful little leaf nose snake. So they they get their name because that leaf shaped scale, right? Yep, on their nose. Like on their nose, you get a really clear look at their head. Sure are beautiful. This guy's what probably like five or six inches. Super beautiful little guy. All right. Probably handle them enough. And you know, so far we've gotten uh, three sidewinders and a leaf nose snake. And there's been a couple other snakes that have been in the road, but we've just missed them. But uh, yeah, man, uh, so far it's been an awesome night. I'm gonna head back to San Diego, but I'm still not out of the desert. So on my way back, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can uh, find anything else in the road. Alrighty. Before I leave, I got one last sidewander in the middle of the road. So yeah, that's four sidewanders for the night. And he is sidewinding off of the road. Look at that. Just getting him off the road, off the road. found some good herbs with that dude <laughs> and yeah actually looking back at today I really didn't spend hardly any time with friends um, yeah I went birding by myself went to the gym by myself went herping by myself before I met uh, that dude and yeah I mean most of my friends are at a pool party today why do you have to work out for pool parties when you can just work out to look good while you go birding and herping right so I am home now, 
and it's like one in the morning. I got all dressed up to uh, go to a festivity with some friends when I got back from herping. But you know, I was having a blast herping and you know, time flies when you're having fun. So yeah, I got back way later than I expected. I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you guys for watching. The point of this video was really just to show you guys what the life is like of a recreational naturalist, of a biologist. What does a biologist do in his or her free time on the weekend? So maybe it'll inspire you to go out and go birding, go herping, look for wildlife and photograph it, explore nature in any way. And remember to download the Dolphin Dating app and also to get your Plover Robe. The links to both Dolphin and Plover Robes are in the description. And hope you guys get out there on the weekends and explore nature.